Thank you for taking the time to view this message online. You can connect with us more through our comments section of this video, through our Facebook page, or through our website, nhgj.org. I'd like to start this message out with actually a look back at the previous message of this series, where I described the mission of the church, why the church exists. And we started that message by looking at 1 Corinthians 12, 27, and it says this, now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And in reading that passage, we said that that first you are really would translates better in terms of a y'all are the body of Christ. Uh, it's understood that we are part of a community. So you are all part of the body of Christ, individually members of it. That's really important for us to remember because we need to continually be pressed to think about our, the church as people living in community with one another, with other Christians, instead of practicing an individualized faith that only exists in my expression of it. So in contrast, the view of the church from a worldly perspective is that the church is an organization that offers religious services. In this way, the goal of pastors and leaders is to structure uh, religious services in a way and market them in a way that it appeals to people. Uh, people, both Christians and non-Christians, they're enticed to participate. Ultimately, in this view of the church, we're invited to select one church over another based upon who has the most appealing religious options for me. The church is part of the marketplace of church offerings and pastors and leaders are mar merchants who look at what people want and then they position their particular church, their local church, uh, in the church marketplace so that they can draw as many customers, <laughs> air quotes, as possible. So in this perspective, if I'm looking for a church, I, I might choose one local church over another based upon the size or the attendance uh, the, the facilities that the church meets in, the variety of ministries that are offered, or even stylistic preferences of the music or the speaker uh, himself or herself. Whereas, in contrast to this, if I view the church as a community, I'm asking more questions about how I fit into that community. Do we have shared values? Do we have a shared expression of faith? Do I have something to offer to that community? And do I feel like I can really connect there and bring myself as part of the, the body of Christ? You can really hear that contrast, I hope you can, in one that focuses primarily on individual preferences and church shopping in that regard, and the other in shared community. Do I have something to bring? And does that community bring something life-giving to me in the way that we experience the body of Christ? Well, if the worldview of church in terms of the church as a marketplace and shopping for particular religious services has been a primary shift of the church, it's no wonder then that a significant shift has also in, uh, occurred in the church where it's become less about disciples who are making disciples and more about uh, what is it that I want from the church. Now, disciples making disciples is what Jesus has asked us to do, but instead, oftentimes this is, has transitioned to leaders who get a handful of staff and volunteers and put together a good service one day each week and then market that to everybody else. I'm thankful. I think we're all thankful that there's a rising tide within the church that has asked this question. Is the best thing that we have to offer the world weekend services or do we have something much more powerful and life-changing to bring to the world? Of course, the answer to that question is an emphatic yes. Followers of Jesus have something more, much more to offer than just weekend services. Really, the church is fulfilling its purpose most fully when we recognize this point, that the church is people living in community as an outpost of God's kingdom here on earth, inviting others to follow Jesus as we follow Jesus. Now, three things about that statement. One is that we're living in community with one another, right? 
Uh, this is an important aspect that I've already addressed even in this message. Uh, two, that we're not an organization, but we are what it looks like when the kingdom comes to earth. His kingdom come, his will be done here on earth through his church as it is in heaven above. Thirdly, that we are inviting others to join with us in life as we follow Jesus. And that's a very important aspect of what it means to be a disciple, that we're also inviting others to be disciples, that we invite people to follow us as we follow Christ. Well, in the remainder of this message, we're going to focus on that main idea that if the church is not about an organization, but about the people, then what is our role? What is my role? What is your role in the church? If the church is really a mission outpost of the kingdom of God, then the people who carry that mission out should really be viewed more as missionaries rather than just attenders or participators. We are ones who carry out that mission. Now, for some people, I just introduced a word that seems very scary, missionary. It, it sounds like something that is reserved for only a very select few people who follow Jesus. And if you're willing to go overseas or cross-culturally, then you're a missionary. But the reality is, and I hope that you see it in this message, that you and I as followers of Christ truly are foreigners in a foreign land bringing a message from heaven to earth and extending God's kingdom here. Truly what a missionary does. Well, let's pray and we'll look a little bit more at this idea of followers of Christ, Christians being missionaries. Lord, as always, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the power that it has to transform our thinking. We thank you that your Holy Spirit accompanies your word to instruct us, Lord, to convict us, to encourage us, and to empower us to fulfill what it is that you would ask us through the scriptures, to, whether that's a point of repentance and change in our thinking and in our hearts and our attitudes, or whether that is empowering us to accomplish the, the role that you have for us in our own life, in our families, in our communities, and around the world. So, Lord, thank you, and we receive your word as we listen. Amen. Well, as I, I mentioned right before the prayer, this idea of missionary can really have the tendency to throw us off or derail us in some way by thinking that that's just for some people, that missionary, I don't want to be a missionary. I don't want to pack up and move overseas. And so this can throw people off. But what if I use the term ambassador? What if I insert, instead of missionary, I said, you and I are ambassadors for God? That might be a term that we can grasp a little bit easier. In fact, it's also a term that the Bible uses to describe our role as Christians. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 20 says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciled to the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. That is really an powerful position, a significant position that God puts us in to be ambassadors for Christ, to be people through whom God is making his appeal to the world. God is reaching out to the world through Christians, through those who have passed from life to death because of Jesus, who now profess faith in Christ Jesus. They are now ambassadors. It says it this way, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Now, thinking about the language of an ambassador is helpful, especially since we sometimes can think only of a missionary as a specific person. We think of a missionary as a unique call that only a few have. 
and that it's always going to be overseas or in foreign lands. Now, an ambassador, while it can be a person who's in a foreign land, it isn't exclusive to that role. An ambassador stands in place of the person or place that they represent, and they do a few things. One, they announce and put in place the values, policies, and the activities on behalf of that person or place that they represent. Let me read that again. So what an ambassador does is that he or she announces and puts in place the values, the policies, and the activities on behalf of a person or place that they represent. Jesus is the perfect example of this. He was the perfect ambassador, the perfect human representative of heaven because he was God in the flesh come to earth. And so he did a perfect job at representing God because he was the exact image of God in flesh. So a couple things that Jesus did. He came from heaven to earth, right? So he came as a representative from heaven to earth. The other thing that he did is he, he performed, he did actions, but he also taught, spoke on behalf of the Father. He said it this way, I only do and speak what the Father tells me to. So again, Jesus' ambassadorship, his representation was in perfection. He never spoke things uh, that were untimely, spoke of things that were off the cuff and didn't apply or uh, spoke half-heartedly or halfway about his father or about the kingdom of God. He always spoke on point. He always did things that were on point with the kingdom of God. So again, in this way, Jesus is the perfect human representative of heaven because he is God in the flesh. So that's another way that he was an ambassador. He did and taught what the father wanted. Thirdly, he demonstrated God's power and sovereignty here on earth. So he performed what he did and the way he said it and, and the way he did things, they, they were done with the power and sovereignty of heaven itself. So when he came to bring the kingdom and demonstrate what the kingdom of God looks like, he didn't just speak about it or demonstrate it from a human standpoint. He brought heavenly, godly power and authority to earth. And so that's really significant as well, because when you think about an ambassador, an ambassador speaks or acts with the authority and the power of either the country, the nation, or the individual with whom they're representing. They have that backing behind them of both authority and sovereignty. And so this is important to see about Jesus, that he wasn't just performing all these things on his own. He was bringing heaven to earth in that way. Fourthly and lastly, he invited, reconciled, and empowered others to do the same. So Jesus wasn't just coming to bring heaven to earth and demonstrate it and then disappear. He actually brought others into uh, and invited them into what it looks like to be a part of that kingdom. And, and that's really another part of ambassadorship, right? You're saying, I'm bringing to you something that is outside of your current experience and I'm inviting you to participate in that and experience what that looks like. From a national perspective, we would say that's citizenship, right? We're inviting people that when you get a taste of what it's like to be a citizen and you get a sense of what we talk about, our values and how we live and uh, you see our power and, and our sovereignty and, and what we're able to do, the invitation would be you can become a citizen of uh, this experience of, uh, of whom I'm an ambassador of. You can be a part of this nation or you can participate with this person with whom I'm representing. Jesus did this over and over, first with the disciples. Come and follow me, he said. He reconciled the disciples to the Father and then through the Holy Spirit, he empowered them to go and do the same, go and make disciples of all nations. Jesus did this again in perfection. And so we see exactly what ambassadorship looks like. But again, because Jesus made this invitation, we're given this opportunity to come and do the same, that Christians are invited to be ambassadors for God. Uh, again, similar to the idea of a missionary, but I, I want us to use that term ambassador because I, I think we can sometimes connect with it uh, more clearly. 
And, and so this invitation is to transition from death into life, right? Come and be a part of the kingdom by your connection, you're reconciled to God through Christ and you pass from death into life. You become a citizen or as the scripture we read earlier says, you become a new creation. All things have passed away old, all men and women, you become new in Christ Jesus entering into his kingdom. Uh, we begin to do and teach what Jesus showed us. And, and that's what the disciples did, right? They didn't start making up things. There were some, and that's why uh, we have these uh, other gospels, these that aren't truly gospels or aren't included in our canon of scriptures. Um, so people taught about other things about Jesus, but in the end, we canonized or identified specific uh, books and writings that are most helpful in helping us to see and most clearly we feel are inspired by the Spirit that point us to Christ, point us to kingdom life, and show us how to live and do the life that Jesus invited us to. And, and so we're invited to do the same thing. Jesus tells us, go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So this is the instruction he gives to the disciples. This is the instruction he gives to us as well. Go and be ambassadors, reconciling people to the Father through Christ by doing and teaching the things that Jesus showed us. Thirdly, we demonstrate God's power and sovereignty. The same work and the same spirit that is at work in Christ Jesus and raised him from the dead is at work in us, is what uh, the Apostle Paul teaches, what the New Testament teaches. It's what Jesus taught. He said, I'm going to the Father. I'm giving you another, the spirit who's going to come. He'll be with you. He will be in you, right? And he will reveal all truth. And so this is the invitation, is that we put on display God's power and his sovereignty as ambassadors for the kingdom. And then fourthly, we too, just like Jesus did with the disciples, we invite people to join with us. We help people be reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. And we reveal and invite people to receive the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Spirit through Jesus, so that they can go and do the same. It gets replicated once again as disciples become disciple makers. Well, in this way, this really is God making his appeal through us, his appeal to the world. Come and see, come and find out what the kingdom of God is like. Come and discover what it looks like when the kingdom of God comes to earth and the gospel is revealed in the world around us. It's not just a select few who travel overseas, but it truly is everyone who receives Christ and passes from death to life is made an ambassador, a missionary in Jesus Christ, who is commissioned into this role. So we no longer represent the systems and values of our families. Now you may have grown up in a family that you say, but my family has great values. And we, we function in a real healthy way, and that's wonderful. And some of those things may reflect uh, kingdom values. And, and in that way, you, you may be reflecting kingdom values and your family's values. But ultimately, we become part of God's family. And anywhere that my family of origin doesn't align with my new family of God, then I adopt the family of God's practices over my family of origin. So, for example, this way, I'm introducing people to the kingdom because what I used to know, uh, the way that I used to handle conflict, if that was uh, passive aggressive, that I just am silent and then I blow up and then I don't reconcile, I just move on from it. No, instead now in God's family, I learn a different pattern. I learn to speak in truth and in love and to work at reconciliation with my brothers and sisters in Christ. So I no longer represent the systems and values of my family or my community. So regardless of what my community and in, in the, the city that I live in or the nation that I live in and my country, I no longer represent their values above God's kingdom. I represent God's kingdom to them and what that looks like. And so I've now become an ambassador for God in his kingdom in this world. So these two ideas, I want to put them side by side as I wrap up this message. One is that the church isn't an organization. It is a mission outpost of God's kingdom here on earth that we're really saying that the church should be 
His kingdom come, his will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And so the church isn't an organization that is essentially like a marketplace of religious services that people shop and look for the best one. Instead, it is a community of Christ followers who gather in fellowship together, who learn more about Christ, who encourage one another, who share their gifts to build up the whole body together and then represent to the world what it looks like when God's spirit and his, and his people have passed from death to life and who live in relationship with one another, that's the church. And then that church is full of, as a community, is full of individuals who are missionaries to the world or ambassadors to the rest of the world. So we go out from our gatherings, go out from our times together, and we go into the world and we say, now come and see, follow me as I follow Christ and experience what it means to be reconciled to God. Experience what it means when God's power and authority come here on earth. I want you to see my life and what it means to live in, in representation of God's kingdom versus a representative of the world around me. The reality is, the, the blessed truth is, is that we're not just people attending a thing and then going out and trying to eke out an existence in the world around us. No, the beautiful picture that we should have hold of is that we are part of Christ's body, that we have passed from death into life that we are mutually edified and encouraged to represent the kingdom of God here on earth. And that begins to spread out from us as we take this good news message, as we take the hope and the life that we have in Christ, and we become members and ambassadors and missionaries of his kingdom that then reconcile others back to him as they see what it's like to live in that environment. And then they too become disciples and disciple makers. And we begin to see how this transforms our families, our communities, and literally it goes out to the world around us. And we can see the life-changing experience that it is when the kingdom of God comes to earth in the church and the kingdom of God is spread out through his ambassadors. I wanna challenge you as I close this morning are you willing to be a missionary for Jesus? In, in some ways, it is a culture shift. It's a rechanging our thinking from going and attending a church to being the church as I go out and asking the question, are you and am I representing Christ in his kingdom when I go out? Is that my sole focus? Is that what I'm passionate about? Have I shifted from this idea that the culture has that I'm going out in the world to fulfill my dreams, that I'm going out to make a name for myself, that I'm going out to uh, get my part of this world and get the, the merchandise, the things that I want and extract it out of the world. Instead, that I'm taking from what I have in God's kingdom and I am blessed by it as I've trans been transformed from death to life and a new creation in Christ and I'm going out to the world to take all of that and setting people free, just as Jesus did, to set the captives free as I bring them into God's kingdom and what it means to experience life in him. I wanna pray for us because this is God's commission for you to be a missionary, an ambassador for God's kingdom. May it take hold of your heart. May it be a, a fire that burns in your life that you're passionate about taking his kingdom to the world around you. Lord, we thank you that this is what it means to be the church. This is what it means to follow you and be a Christian is to follow you out into the world around us, a foreign land from what it means to live in your kingdom. Lord, we may not be crossing seas. We may not be going over borders of political territories. Uh, we may not be uh, learning different languages in, in terms of dialects of our tongue, but Lord, we are very much when we step out from uh, our experience together as the church, as we go into the world, whether that's out of our homes and into the world or, or out of our church fellowship and our community into the world, we truly are crossing into a new land and a new people. We're crossing from the kingdom of God and what it means to live life together in pursuit of wholeness and holiness in you. 
and we step into a world that knows nothing of your life and what it means to be free in you. A world that has experienced brokenness, a world that is experiencing great disruption and pain and suffering, a world that is in disunity and disarray, and you are inviting us to bring your kingdom into that place. Lord, may you empower us through your spirit. I pray for everyone that is listening to this today. Holy Spirit, come in power and bring your sovereignty and your authority to each one that as they step out into the world, they step out to bring your message of hope, not just with word or with whatever they bring to the table, but they bring the power and authority of your spirit with them so that they can reach this world with the good news of Jesus Christ and your kingdom would come and your will would be done here on earth, everywhere we go, just as it's taking place in heaven above. We thank you for it. We are committed to doing it. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can find more resources for this service at nhgj.org. Email us your prayer requests to prayer at nh4gj.org. If you are a new follower of Jesus, we have a free resource for you called Following Jesus. To receive a copy, send a request to info at nh4gj.org. If you would like to partner with our ministry through giving, you can do that online at nhgj.org giving or by mail to 641 Horizon Drive, Grand Junction, Colorado, 81506. Thank you for being with us and may the Lord bless you.